Check that the bars are not being cut too long or cut too short. First, check the cut length on the controller screen under the scissor icon. Then measure the bars that are on the conveyor being loaded. If the bender is bending inconsistently, nine times out of ten, the issue will be the encoder underneath the bender table. Check for loose connections and pulleys or a loose or torn belt. You can also try swapping the encoders between the benders to see if the problem moves to the other bender. There are several things that can cause the center distance or belly length to be inconsistent, either too short or too long. First, check the minimum and maximum travel, review the travel calibration process, and how to calibrate the machine. Check the homing of the movable bender. Be sure that it is stomping at the same spot every time it is in the home position. If you are finding that the center length or the belly distance is consistently short or consistently long, it could be an adjustment needed with the bend radius. If the center distances are wrong on all of your bar diameters, the problem may be the homing or calibration. If the center distances are wrong on just one bar diameter, check the bend radius. Control errors can be found at the bottom of the touch screen. Errors will pop up in the bottom dark gray box. A position feedback error normally has to do with an encoder. There are three main items that would cause a position feedback error. The drive itself, the GPIO board, or the encoder itself. First, do a physical check of the encoder under each of the bend tables. Remove the safety guards, then check the encoder for a loose pulley, loose cable, and the encoder belt. Check the connections from the encoder back to the controller. Check the GPIO board. You may be able to switch the GPIO boards located underneath the control keypad in the controller to see if one works and one does not. Lastly, check the drive under the control cabinet for any errors. From the Machine Setup button, you can get the Machine Diagnostics button. Here, all the inputs and outputs are displayed for you to manually test. For instance, clamp open. Each of the inputs and outputs can be manually tested. If you're running the machine and you get an error message, you can go into the diagnostic screen to check the manual inputs and outputs. Then touch the input and a help screen will pop up with a list of possible things to check as well as a picture indicating where that sensor is on the machine. In order to check the outputs, you must first switch the machine into automatic mode. Check the machine is switched to automatic and the red indicator light is on. Then touch the touch screen to test manually each of the outputs. If the operator is in the middle of running a shape and the machine just stops suddenly, this may be the result of a drive trip. Open the lower door to the front of the console. There is an interlock switch on the door. You may need to remove the red interlock tab from the door and stick it in the interlock switch on the console in order to see the drive errors occur. Turn the machine off and wait 30 seconds for the drives to de-energize. Restart the machine. Run the shape again and see if there is an error code on the drive. If the error persists, contact KRB at area code 717-252-3667 and press 3 for service and tell us the drive error indicated on the machine. After doing the initial home, press the Machine Setup button at the bottom of the control screen. Then press Machine Configure. On the left-hand side of the screen you will see Count at 4 meter. Enter the password 123 in order to edit the screen. You then measure from the edge of the gauge stop to the center pin of the movable bender and measure 4 meters. Manually position the movable bender until the center pin registers at precisely the 4 meter mark from the face of the gauge stop. Check the control screen and record the present position reading. Whatever the present position number is gets entered in at the count at 4 meter entry box. Press Home to return to the program screen. Each individual bar diameter needs to be calibrated and, depending on the bar diameter, there may be multiple options for the tooling. 
make sure you're selecting the correct tooling that you're going to be running. To change the bar diameter size, go to the Machine Setup button. Select the bar size from the pop-up screen. Then select the option for either Split Tooling or Mandrel Tooling. To change the Bend Calibration, press Machine Configure. Enter the password 123. On the right side of the screen, you will see the Bend Calibration for the tooling that you selected. There is a 90 degree setting and a 180 degree setting. Change the counts up or down to change the degree of bends. There is one for the moving bender and one for the stationary bender. If the bend is weak on the 180 degrees, increase the counts. If the bend is weak on the 90 degrees, increase the counts. If the bend is too hard, decrease the counts until you get the proper calibration. Increments of 10 counts are equal to about one half of a degree. First, check incoming power. Make sure the breaker in the back of the console has not been tripped. If the machine starts up but none of the drives start up, check the breakers on each of the drives. They are located in front of the console behind the lower door. There are three breakers for each drive. If you see red in the opening, that indicates the breakers are on and functioning correctly and have not been tripped. If the conveyor rollers are not working, check that the motor starter protectors, or MSPs, are not tripped. They are located in the back of the console. First, reference the electrical drawing. Check to make sure CR1 and CR1A are energizing. CR1 and CR1A are located in the back of the console. Look for the switches. When the switches are orange, the machine is in automatic. When they are clear, you're in manual mode. When the machine starts and the computer screen boots up, the software runs a check of its systems. If there is a communication error, it will show up on the software startup screen. Open the top of the console where the input boards are located. Check the communication cable connections to each of the input boards. Check the addressing of the boards to make sure that each of the boards is addressed correctly. Check the COM port 2 connection to the back of the touchscreen. If the communication error is cleared, the software will revert right to the program screen and be ready for production. If you are having issues with the touchscreen, please contact KRB Service at 717-252-3667. Press 3 for service. If the machine is not bending capacity, check the tooling that you were using. Also, check the capacity chart. Notice that the split tooling capacity can be less for 90 degrees than the mandrel capacity. If you are not bending capacity and you are using the split tooling, switch to the mandrel tooling and try again. Double check that the bend pins are in the proper location according to the diagram on the control screen. Check that you are bending on speed 3 on the program screen. Speed 3 allows the maximum torque for bending. If the liftoff arms are not coming up all the way, first check the air pressure coming into the machine. You need at least 90 PSI and 12 CFM of airflow. Also, check the lift delay under the machine setup. If the timing is not set for long enough, the arms will not have time to make it up to the full stroke. You may have to increase the counts.